Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this driving business forward conversation. And I guess I do want to frame it, no matter what the screen says, what this is going to be is a conversation about driving business forward. MAP, Mobility Advancement Program, some of you know it as Surtax, and some of you know it from 2019, Penny for Transportation. That's correct. I'm getting ready to go over some information that originated through light conversation in 2018, but very proposed robust conversations in 2019 with action steps that should have started in 2020. And you and I are here today and it's August, 2022. So for some of you, I don't want you to act like you missed something, you haven't. But if you were around in 19 and 20, and you're not on my list of engaging contracting opportunities, winning some contracting opportunities, or planning and scheduling to go after more contracting opportunities, I need you to figure out why you're not on that list. But if you're new today, and if this is maybe your first conversation with us about math, or your second, and you want to get the devil in the details, we're going to share those devil in the details today so that next year this time, and certainly prior to August 2024, you should be on my list of those who are engaging opportunities and hopefully on my list of those who have won actual contracts. Next slide. We want to make sure our small businesses understand MAP. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about us. Most of you hopefully know us, the Office of Economic and Small Business Development, small business focus, promote business and growth uh, through job creation. We're a service agency, and this is important for today's meeting or today's conversation. We're service agency because you need to know before any county agency buys a good material service or product, before they buy any, they check with our office to see if we have eligible small businesses who can provide that service. This happens before a bid ever goes to purchasing. It starts with us. The reason why MAP is relevant to me making that statement, the same holds true with the Mobility Advancement Program. Before county agencies or before the municipalities buy any good material or service with surtax or MAP money, they got to check with us to see if there's an opportunity to set a goal on those projects where small businesses can advantage. Next slide. So Sabika told you, I'm going to go through this conversation. I'm going to go through these slides. We want you, if you got questions, put those in the Q&A, not the chat, but by all means, use the chat to give yourself a shout out. You don't want to miss what I'm saying, but definitely use the chat to give yourself a shout out because I always tell my small businesses, and though we're doing this virtual, if we were face to face, I would say, look to your left, look to your right, look in front, look behind, because you never know as a business what other business could use your service, and you never know as a business who else in the room that you could use their service. So don't forget to give yourself a shout out in the chat so people know who are with us. And it's a good number. Uh, it's about 83 and we got staff. So that's over 75 of you listening. Guys, all of this is important because Broward is a small business community. SBA says small is 500 employees or less. You see the number. Broward County businesses, 89% of Broward County businesses have 20 employees or less. So we are a small business community. Next slide. And this is what we're currently working with. And I don't know if those numbers scare you or not, but they shouldn't scare you. We could sustain right now, this office, we could sustain 2,500 to 3,000 certified small businesses. You see my max on the CVE side is 993. I could sustain 
having 2,500 or 3,000 and still have a lot of activities for CBEs to competitively go after. We only show these paint cans and these numbers to let you know we got more room to grow as well as to go because our ordinance says for whatever the county buys, we're trying to make sure at least 25% of it is spent with our local small businesses. So on the local side, the county procures about $1 billion a year. That means I'm trying to make sure at least 250 million are spent with small business. And remember this, the county buys a lot. We don't buy everything, but we buy a lot. So though we talk a lot about construction and trades because those are the big ticket items, folks, our HR department, we use consultants who train or teach in leadership development, peer development, developing relationships. We look for those kind of consultants. Folks, we do landscaping and lawn care. We're looking for folks to provide pesticide. We're looking for folks to do fire extinguisher. We even have a brochure on our website that said Broward is buying. That's to show you things that we buy that I have either zero or maybe only one or two firms, which means I can use more. So I'm saying that, that because so many of the activities or the big tickets are these constructions and these roadways and my airport. But for you other businesses, minus today's workshop, please keep in mind, anything the county buys, if I have at least two, Have we moved to the next slide? Okay, understanding the three Ps. And this is who we really are. Program, process, people. Folks, we're gonna talk about surtax today, MAP. But this applies to surtax and MAP, as well as the county's regular program. If you are a small business, and people say, well, Ms. McDonald, what do I really need to know? Folks, whether it's surtax or not, what you really need to know is the three Ps. Program. Understand that there's a Business Opportunity Act that, that is written that explains this program. You need to know the acronym CBE, County Business Enterprise. You need to know the acronym SBE, Small Business Enterprise. You need to know what we say when I say sheltered market. You need to know what I mean when we say reserve. Learn the program. Because if you know the program, you then know when it's time for bids, when it's time for conversation with county agencies, or when it's time for conversation with prime contractors, by knowing the program, you have a better understanding of their expectancies of you. Knowing the program, means you also know when someone on the other side mistakenly says something that's wrong, like they don't need to use you. You want to know the program. The thing we want to help you with after the program is the process. Many of you as small businesses, you're very good at what you do. And you got multiple contracts as you grow your business in private industry. I'm similar, but I'm not exactly private industry. You can't take me a county agency, a procurement agent to lunch, dinner, buy a nice dinner, give a bottle of scotch and win a contract. You can't. So we need to make sure you really understand the procurement process, the small business engaging process, the process on how we try to make sure you have access to information, especially about bids, <clears throat> before bids ever come out. We teach you the process. We want to make sure you really understand what it is to pitch. This coming Friday, there's a meet and greet scheduled. And I think it's at one o'clock at the West Regional Library. And it's going to be for a project at the airport, FLL. And it's a connector project, T1, T2, T3. 
But the thing is, it's a two-step process. Just using this as an example about process. County has already shortlisted four firms who will eventually compete to be the winner to do this terminal one, two, and three connector at the airport. This is about $125 million contract. We've already set a goal. 25% of that $125 million contract must be spent with my certified small businesses. So this Friday, we're bringing the four shortlisted firms into a room with as many of our small businesses as possible who believe, based on this project, they want to pitch these four firms. If my small businesses get a chance, they want to pitch all four firms. Because when it's all said and done, these four firms to be compliant must demonstrate who, if the contract's awarded, they will be working with to satisfy the 25% CBE goal. So that's the meet and greet. Folks, that's process because we're trying to make sure our folks have a chance to meet potential primes before the primes ever have to do the letter of intent, the LOI, with the small business to send back with their bid. That's process. Process is us making sure you understand Periscope, which is the county's bid platform, to know where to go and find information. For the sake of this workshop and the conversation today, process is us making sure you recognize that for all the cities that participate in MAP or Surtax, as you call it, they have their own individual platform. Process is for us making sure that you recognize to find out what Dania Beach bids are, what Margate bids are, what Fort Lauderdale bids are, what Miramar bids are, to find out whatever the bids are for the cities participating in MAP, you at least need to know the bid platform. Process dictates that my team on the website tell you each one of those. Process dictates that by giving you as much information as possible in advance, you can then do your homework and connect the dots. You can begin doing outreach if outreach is necessary. You can begin collecting past information in case a bid is ever a repeated contract. You would love to see the first contract or the first bid tab to know who actually won. So by the time the new, con the new bid comes out, you at least familiar with what was previously done. Process is us helping small businesses connect the dot, but I have to be crystal clear. Process is us assisting small businesses and connecting the dots. But folks, my small businesses have to connect the dot, which means they have to do their homework. They have to take the information we're providing and connect the dots. After knowing program, understanding process, the next one is people. I just gave you an example about some of the people the upcoming meet and greet, just using it as an example, that's gonna happen for the terminal connector project at the airport, terminal one, two, and three. Four firms have already been identified, shortlisted, bringing the four firms in the room, people. There's gonna be a chance for my small businesses to meet the people who could use them on this contract. To meet the people, that's gonna be required to use some small businesses. And I needed to say it that way because I can never tell a prime who to use. My office can never tell a prime how many of you to use. My office does tell primes, this project has a 25% goal. That means you must use as many CBEs as you need to use to be in compliance with the 25%. And yes, they have to submit that to us at the time of the bid. And yes, they're married to you. This isn't 2002. This isn't 1995. They can't use you, submit you, and once they win the bid, three weeks later, fire you and hire their cousin. 
That day is over. If they marry themselves to you, and this includes surtax, they marry to you. So the other thing at the programming process, we try to make sure you meet the right people. The reason I also try to say that one slowly, many of you, you're taking advantage of what you've been taught, what you've seen on television, what you believe to be a good business practice, since business is about relationships, and many of you believe you must meet the people. I'm here to tell you we're government. It's over 77,000 of you. So government agencies will not have the capacity to meet every single one of you. We know that. Let's be real. They don't have to meet you. But as because we have a program and we have a process, we try to make sure you have access to the right information and when possible, the right people who can make sure that what you're doing is on par. But that private definition or explanation or example of that they must meet you, let's go to lunch, I want to tell you who I am, I want you to have me on my mind, I want you to take my brochure, they don't have to. But we do enough things that make sure you are aware of what the real opportunities are. As another example, and that's worth you guys knowing as well, opportunity commission chambers I'm going to bring airport seaport I'm going to bring construction management division highways division public works we're going to bring Broward County Transit we're going to bring multiple agencies into the commission chambers and they're going to be there the first week of October to explain what projects they're looking to launch in the new fiscal year, which would have just started on October the 1, over the next year, year and a half. They're going to speak to my audience. They're going to have a PowerPoint to follow through by. When the session is over, you'll have access within the week of that PowerPoint. But after the session is over, to share that information. So I am being crystal clear. We can never guarantee every single county agency or employee who you think you need to meet, you're going to meet. Can't say it. But we're going to do everything we can to make sure the right people you need to meet are available. Some people come up and say, Mr. McDonough, I want to meet the airport director. And I said, okay. But do you really know that the airport director has no say in the procurement process or what's being procured through that process. So meeting him, if you afforded that opportunity, might be good, but it's not a direct correlation to you winning a contract or you either engaging that bid. So that's the difference I really do want my folks, even dabbling in MAP, to understand. I'm not saying the lessons you learned over the last 10, 20, 30, or 40 years about relationships are not important. They are. But because as mentioned, I'm government. There's 77,000 small businesses. There's over 60 different businesses of industry. Broward County government actually introduces opportunities. Because of all of this, you will not have a chance to meet everyone you think you need to meet. So you need to be more focused on where do I get the information and who are some of the people I need to meet. And as an office, that's our job, to make sure we can get you as much information as possible, especially prior to a bid, and make sure when a chance presents itself, we introduce you to some of the people that we do know you should need to know so that you can follow them, follow their website, follow information going into a bid, collect old information from a And it is relevant to surtax because the same thing I just said via the county, these are the type of relationships. This is the type of process. And our program still holds true for the cities when spending MAP or surtax money. We want you to understand program process people. That's what we're about. We want to help you connect those dots. Next slide. 
And that leads us to those of you who are not certified, our local program. And the local program is really about the CBE when it comes to MAP. The MAP program, Mobility Advancement Program, the penny for transportation that was originally called in surtax, is using the county's ordinance, the Business Opportunity Act. It's using my program, but under the CBE, the County Business Enterprise. Next slide. So here's the thing. Because I'm MAP, I'm not going to focus on SBE. In short, SBE is when the county are purchasing 250000 or less. Small business enterprise. Getting certified, you got those criteria. CBE, whenever the county is buying something 250000 or more, and this now includes MAP, surtax, these are the businesses we're trying to find opportunities for. To be eligible, we're talking about a small business when I just focus on the CBE side. In short, the personal net worth of the owner is $1.32 million or less, not counting his or her primary residence. The gross receipts of the business for most industries averages $5 million or less over three years. Or if you're in construction, $9 million or less over three years and a useful function. If you are a business and in the course of what you do daily, the county is buying it or surtax is buying it, you provide a useful function. And as long as your business has been in Broward at least one year, folks, you're eligible to be certified for the sake of surtax or MAP. That's the criteria to be certified. So let's say you are a business and you've done good business the last five or six years off and on with the city of uh, Plantation. You know what we need you to get certified? Now getting certified with Broward, let's talk about your advantages. Yes, you were registered with Plantation. You bid with Plantation. You won bids with Plantation. That's great. Let me tell you what the advantage of you now being certified. When Plantation uses surtax money, they got to use certified small businesses. So getting certified with us means that the activity you currently do with plantations continue. Certified with me means the surtax activity you do with plantation can begin. Certified with me, it means that the surtax activity in all the other cities you're eligible for. Certified with me, it means the county surtax you're eligible for. Certified with me means any county business activity you're eligible for. So you might be a very successful business today doing business with the city your company's in. If the company that you have is in a city who's going to touch surtax money, Getting certified advantages you five times. Keep doing your local stuff. Now do surtax with that local. Now do surtax with all the other cities. Now do surtax with the county. Now do all business with the county. Folks, that's the advantage. If someone ever asks, why should I get certified? I'm already doing business uh, with Cooper City. Why should I get certified? I'm already doing business with the city of Hollywood. That's great. But if Cooper City or the city of Hollywood touch this surtax money, whoever wins contracts are required to work with certified small businesses. So that's what we want you to know. Next slide. And this is the program. It's a penny. And they're going to be collecting about $355 million a year, every year for 30 years. And we got 27 more years to go. We've decided, the oversight board, the county commission decided, Sandy, your local program is at least 25% of what the county buys. We want to use small businesses. MAP has decided 30%. So we start at 30%. The key thing is now, and I always have to use this example. Yep, I said we're going to collect about $355 million. The monies can only be used, transportation operation, transportation services, infrastructure in the county and the 31 cities and the future of rail and go to the next slide though we're going to be collecting 355 million 
People say, well, where do you get this 53 million carve out? Shouldn't 30% on 355 million be much more? We do the realistic and the conservative measuring. And here's one of the real life examples. Yep, we might be collecting 355 million a year, transportation operations, transportation services, infrastructure, future of rail. But if the county's transit system, which they did two years ago, if they purchase 40 new electrical buses, I can't set a goal on that. Why? Because I have no small business in my county who is certified by the Florida Department of Transportation or who is certified by the Department of Transportation to make a bus. I have no small businesses <coughs> in my county who is certified by the Department of Transportation to sell a bus. So since we're gonna use some of that surtax money to buy buses, I can't set a goal. That's why we say I can reserve 30% on eligible projects. So be the conservative. So to be conservative, we said, okay, I get that 355. Let me take at least half. Let me look at about 177 million a year that I should feel comfortable knowing there's gonna be things we do that I can set a goal. So if I take that hovers me around 53 million a year, what you need to know is that it's our intent that anything from 50 to 53 or 50 to 55 million every year can be spent on small business. That's why we need more small business. There's going to be some real opportunities over these years. And when you think about the fact of all the years, folks, that's about 1.68, almost 1.7 billion that's going to be carved out for small business. And I say this openly. It should be the county's job, all 31 cities' job with this office support of making sure that we make financially stable multiple small businesses in Broward, that we grow multiple millionaire businesses in Broward, that we grow multiple multi-millionaire businesses in Broward. If Broward County is going to spend that kind of money over 30 years, if that kind of car route is going to be for small business, we can't fake it. We should be intentional by saying, yes, we're trying to grow businesses in our county. Yes, we want to spend this money and a percentage with business. The small business program, folks, in general, it's for not if businesses are not. They got 900 or 1,500 registered. Forget that. How many small businesses can I help get engaged in the process? How many small businesses end up winning real contracts? How many small businesses end up winning and growing and scaling? That's what we're really about. Map just happens to be another opportunity or another initiative that hopefully will help us. Next slide. So one of the things that we do is that we also do meetings with the oversight board. And these are just some of the quarterly information that we actually share with them. Uh, talk about the different industries based on the different projects. You know, talk about how many small businesses are being considered. Talk about the reviews of the projects and the goals that we're establishing. So please understand you can always go to our website and see quarterly reports or get information about projects or get information about awards. Because again, we don't want it to be a secret. You need to know that projects are going on the street. You need to know that your colleagues are bidding on projects. You need to know that some of your colleagues are winning projects. I want to stay there for a minute. At the end of the day, and I'm going to be some more slides that will reinforce this, you need to know before you start questioning us. And some of you might remember in 2019, we told you, challenge us. If you thought it was all lip service, challenge us. Again, the county buys a lot. We don't buy everything. MAP or surtax is a special industry, specific industries. So in this regard, we say engage the process. I now have small businesses winning county contracts. I have small businesses winning city contracts. I got small businesses who've been on my workshop since 2019 who are not even engaging. I got some small businesses who are bidding who haven't won yet. But I have some small businesses who haven't put a foot forward 
to connecting the dots and understanding what I need to do. And I, that's why I got to remind you again. Folks, we want to disseminate and share the information. See, I don't want this to be all glamour and sound like it's easy. You really do have to connect the dots. You really do have to do your homework. But I'm excited to say from 2019 to now, 2022, we must be saying something right. Because I've got small businesses who are following and connecting dots and winning contracts with cities as well as with the county. So we're going to continue doing what we started in 2019. There is no magic wand. We go share information. We're going to tell you where to find information. We're going to tell you how to engage the cities. We're going to tell you where you can find some information out about upcoming projects. But because you chose to be in business, after I tell you this, you have to connect your own dots. You have to get to that finish line. You got to win, go after that contract to lose, to understand why you lost, to go after that next one to eventually win. And yes, it only makes sense when the bids are in your industry. See, we're not making that up. If the bid that's going out from an individual city is not about what you do, then that was not for you. If the bid that's going out by an individual city sounds like what you do, then that is for you. So yes, understand, this is just one of many initiatives, but this one is centered and focused on things related to transportation operation, transportation services, infrastructure in the county and the 31 cities, and the future of rail. That's what we're dealing with. And quarterly, I give reports to the oversight board about where we are with those activities. Next slide. Here's some of those examples. To date, projects reviewed by my office as of July 29th, reviewed for county, we reviewed 59 projects. And when we total the dollars, they total up to about $422 million worth of projects. If I'm setting an average goal of 30%, you see what we're attempting to do. For my cities, we've actually reviewed 124 million dollars of activity but we're averaging based on each individual project about a 33 percent cve goal folks at the end of the day if all of these come to fruition that should be about 104 million dollars out there for our small businesses so we go through this process and one of the things i do want to say County projects are not just being reviewed. They're actively hitting the street. Cities, for a lot of reasons, have been a little slower. But folks, we're at that point. This is the month of August. I hope to come back to you as early as November. When we get out of the summer and the commissions are really back for all the cities, you're going to start seeing more of the city projects that we have already reviewed. Some of these we reviewed a year ago. But you're going to start seeing more of the city projects hit the street. I hope you're trailing and finding out what those opportunities are in terms of potential and preparing yourself as October, November, December, they start hitting the street. Next slide. We also want to make sure that you saw some projects that were awarded. We talked about review. These were projects awarded. Activity happening on the street. Folks starting to get paid. Counting $47 million. Municipal, 10 million, and that's as of July 29th. Awarded to contractors, 24 projects countywide, 23 on the city side. Total amounts awarded, 146 million has been awarded for county projects. 31 million has been awarded for city projects. The average CBE commitment, that means whoever won the contract committed to using CBEs for the county, it's about 38%. That's above my 30. And for the cities, it's about 35%. So know that after projects are reviewed, they eventually go through other multiple steps. They eventually will end up being awarded. And once they're awarded, whatever the prime says they're going to do, whichever small businesses they say they're going to use to do what they say they're going to do, we monitor that monthly 
to make sure that the prime actually use the small business and pay the small business. And that's how we end up getting to our numbers. So again, these type of numbers are also on our website on a regular basis. Next slide. <coughs> some more updates, some more CBE awards. Guys, these are some projects. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but again, this PowerPoint, as Savika told you, will be made available. So I'll guarantee by next Monday or Tuesday, it'll be on our website. But I want you to take a look. You got a Davy project and you have the dollar pay to date. You see the firms that got the money paid to date. And we're also showing you the industry. This we wanted to do and we're going to continue to do. Because no matter how much I talk, no matter how much my staff talk, no matter how much we put this out on the website, what's really going to bring home the message is when you as small businesses start seeing other businesses by name, who's winning? Like I said, there's no magic. They've heard the same thing you're hearing from me. They're following the same documentation you should be following from me. Next slide. That's the key to all of this, is that we want to make sure that all the information is made available. There's North Lauderdale. There's a plantation project. There's a Southwest Ranches project. That's actually two. Wilton Man project at the bottom. You had a $85,000 pay. That was a green construction. Technology was the firm. And you see they did irrigation and landscape. Folks, these projects, as we review them, they go back to the cities. Once the cities got their I's and crossed their T's, they put the projects out for bid. Once the projects are out for bid, no matter if it's the prime or our CBEs who respond, we check to make sure compliance is met and CBEs are going to be used. Once we give the compliance nod to the city, the city then has the right to award the project. And once the project's awarded, that contractor now has to do what he or she said and they also got to use the small businesses they selected. I want to see more of your names on the municipal as well as the county projects, especially after more municipal projects start to roll out. Next slide. And Surtex County projects, CBE awards, there you go. You see a $170,000 gig. You see a $735,000 gig. You see a $37,000 gig. And some of those weren't construction. Some of that's advertising. Some of that's engineering. So there's other things that are also done, though this is about surtax. Anything related to transportation operations, transportation services, infrastructure, and the future of rail are eligible activities. So you see on the other side, some of the industries have been communication and marketing. You see some more public relations. You see some more wiring, electrical, drywall. Again, we report what we review. We report what's assigned. We monitor monthly the project and the activity. And it's our plan to continue sharing this information because this is far more valuable than anything I can see. Look at that top line, Dickey Consulting Services, public involvement and in stakeholder management, public relations, public outreach. Again, we're reporting what's told to us, and these are small businesses who are winning or who have won. Some haven't started getting paid yet. Contracts could have been inked within the last day or the last 30 days, but the other ones you see, contracts are underway and small businesses are being paid. This is what we want you to really know with today's workshop, that there are real businesses, some that you know, some you know the firm name, and some you see the industries, they vary, even though, and I gotta repeat it again, even though this is about transportation operations, transportation services, infrastructure, and the future of rail, whatever the county needs to buy or whatever the cities need to buy, to make that happen, we're looking for those type businesses. CBEs are being awarded projects. CBEs are winning projects. CBEs are being paid. That's the message. CBEs are being paid. Next slide. Surtax Municipal Projects updates. CBEs paid. Paid the CBEs to date from the municipal projects that we just went over. 
2,146,000. County projects, 4,276,000. So as of now, those dollars have been paid to CBEs. You saw some who had paid the date. You saw some who just got started, they haven't gotten paid. Some of those have went to completion. What you need to know for all MAP projects, total paid to our CBEs to date, 6,423,000. Just trying to bring the message home. Small businesses are gonna get paid. And let's be real, as the projects get bigger, and remember, like I said, municipals, they haven't put a lot of projects out. The county hasn't put the major part of their larger projects out, folks. We got more room. See, I get to say it because we already know we carved out about 53 million. I got much more room. And I'm excited because as I go into this fall, I believe, I've been told, the majority of the dotted I's have been dotted and the T's have been crossed. And I can begin to expect more municipal projects hitting the street. Why am I emphasizing municipal projects? Because when you think about it, that's 31 cities. It's about 27 of my 31 cities who have signed up to say that they want to use municipal, they want to use surtax funds. They already got reviewed or approved projects. So those are going to be multiple projects. The cities aren't doing one or two. Cities, when this is all said and done, are doing five and six projects. The municipal projects are going to be some of the best opportunities for my CBEs. See, the county might be hitting that 9, 12, 15, $20 million range. And that prime has to use my CBEs to meet the 30, 35, or 40%. But a lot of my cities are going to be hitting that 800,000, that million and five, that two and that three million. The CBE doesn't have to wait to try to be a sub. The CBE can go after that 800,000, that million five, that two or that three million themselves. The city projects might be some of the best entry points for a lot of my CBEs. Those city projects, because my CBEs may have already had a relationship in understanding the procurement process in a specific city, can make sure that they're more engaged. The cities, because at the end of the day, you're a small business, and though I got about 27 cities and I got the county who's all spending surtax money, you don't have enough administrative staff to monitor and track 27 cities plus all the county projects. You're gonna to have to narrow them down. The cities might be some of the best interest points for a lot of my smaller, small businesses. I'm just throwing that out there because you heard me say, you gotta do your homework and you gotta connect your dots. But I'm not sitting here thinking that you got enough administrative services to connect the dot on 27 cities. You don't. So we try to give you as much information as possible. You still have to make a business decision to decide which projects and which communities you go after. We're just here to say that the opportunities are aplenty. You still need to narrow it where it works for you. Next slide. County business enterprise projects awarded to contractors by industry. Folks, we keep this list for a lot of different reasons. The oversight board wants to know the industries. Those who aren't certified, those who aren't businesses yet, wink, wink. There's 27 more years, or if we start January 2023, there's 26 more years of surtax. So if I really heard this message, and no, no one's promising me if I start a business, I'm going to win. No. No one's promising me if I do everything that I'm told, I'm going to win $5 million worth of work. But it sounds like they're telling me these are the ongoing industries that's currently winning surtax opportunities. If I'm not even a business yet, and we said this back in 2019, if I'm not even a business yet, I could really consider starting a business. Or if I got the access to capital, maybe buy somebody else's business. I can then get a better understanding of this program. And after a year, get certified with the county. Certainly line myself up to get registered with two or three cities. And since nothing is promised, based on the industry and the business I just started, two years from now, I get extremely aggressive about surtax opportunities. Folks, the point I'm trying to make, even if someone just got started today, 
and they say two years from now, don't you realize that that business, because it's business, still has 24 years to engage this process? So what I'm trying to say, all of this right now is about a strategy and plan. Understanding what the county's going to be buying, understanding what the cities are going to be buying. And if you're not already in business and you're choosing, we don't advise you, but you're choosing to go into a certain business, you always want to know, where are my opportunities to win contracts? Again, we share the industries for a lot of different reasons. Sometimes we share the industries because I got active businesses in Broward who may have heard about the small business program, never really got certified. Then they heard about Surtax, didn't know that it's connected to the small business program. And they look up and see demolition contractor and they say, wow, I've been demol demolishing buildings off and on for the last 10 years. I didn't know Broward had a small business program. Wow, I didn't know demolition like excavating, that the cities are going to be doing these projects and there's a real funding source. Wow, maybe I need to go get certified. Another reason or just another reason why we try to show the industries to date being utilized. Next slide. Project award, project number, project opportunity, CBEs are winning. Again, that's just me trying to bring that message home that they're coming. In 2019, we said they were coming. They really did come. I'm sitting here in 2022. I'm telling you they're coming. Cities are now going to start catching up with the county. They're coming. Get ready. Next slide. Here's another example. Town of Southwest Ranches. There's the company. That's what was paid to date. See some of the pictures of the work of the work that was just plain old asphalt, maintenance of traffic, site preparation. Do your homework one day and you can call me or email me. M-O-T. Maintenance of traffic. M-O-T. Maintenance of traffic. You know, that's a real NACE code. North American Industry Code. Index code. Maintenance of traffic. Seems like it's going to be a whole bunch of asphalt going on. Seems like with Surtax, there's going to be a whole bunch of uh, street improvement work going on. Maintenance of traffic. Seems like every single project that's happening on the road, the street, or the intersection is going to need MOT. If I'm a business, a concrete guy or an asphalt guy, a landscape guy, if I'm not a business, I need to find out from the state of Florida, what's my certification to become an MOT? Because if I was a maintenance of traffic contractor, how many contracts could I bid on? How many different vendors could I sell my services to. Maintenance of traffic isn't what most of you actually think when you think about surtax and these projects. But it's one of the examples that we talked about back in 2020. We even held a specific workshop with the Broward County Transit. Chris Walton, the former transit director, was there and he was explaining. It wasn't MAP, <clears throat> it was just all of the ADA and the bump outs and the new shelters. For the bus system he had to install and he wanted folks to know one of the biggest holdups for a lot of those projects was that the company didn't have in-house mot and we didn't have a lot of independent contractors who were mot and that was just trying to replace all the bus shelters in broward or updating them wink wink or golden nugget Broward County Transit still has a commitment to replace or upgrade all bus shelters and stops in the county. Therefore, MOT alone is needed for every project. But as you see within this one, MOT was another service that was used to complete this. 
I just wanted to show that example because that's what I mean. Guys, when we share this information, when we show a slide like this, when you're trying to figure out how you really fit, I need you to think about what we're saying and then at a later date, read it again slowly and you would see, oh my goodness, I hadn't thought about it that way. If I'm a sod or a landscape guy, I got to recognize most road work does something within the median or off of the immediate curves. So that work is going to need side folk. It's going to need landscape folk. It's going to need irrigation folks. So again, it's not everything. Yes, I did not mention a restaurant. It's not everything. Nope, I did not mention who sells women handbags. Yep, it's not going to be everything. I didn't mention a retail store. I didn't. It's not about those. But there's so many things related to transportation operations, transportation services, infrastructure and the future of rail and if you happen to be in that industry you need to study more to see where some of your opportunities are we're going to continue to show this because these are real examples next slide of what's happening right now with firms so with that we're here today because of Savika and people like Pam Danberg and Vanetta and Miss Bell, they happen to be our community relations and outreach. They try to provide technical assistance. They do these type of workshops. We schedule those meet and greets like the one I told you happened in Friday. Community relations outreach is our way of trying to get information to you. It's our way, let's be clear. We try to work with every one of the 31 cities we try to get this information to all of the chambers. We try to get this information to all of the economic development organization. Savika even has a group of public information officers she work with in most, if not all the city to try to get this information out. We're crystal clear. For the same reason I got about 90 something folks. I just told you 77,000 businesses in Broward. Uh, you know it's about 2 million residents in Broward. We get it. Me and this office will never be able to get the information out to everyone, but we try. Community relations and outreach is my key office division who tries to make sure as much information as we have or we get, we get to you. Next slide. So with that, folks, we need you to stay connected. That's a link for the Matt Brower. That's a link for the official Matt Brower office. Uh, become a registered vendor, become a certified small business, be it on current solicitations. Never let the first time you bid be on an active solicitation you want to win. You need to make sure you study that periscope. You need to make sure you understand how to respond to a bid. More importantly, you want to make sure you understand in that system how to upload your documents. Because if the bid is due at two o'clock on a Thursday, you don't want to be getting started at noon or at one. So definitely a tip. We tell folks, familiarize yourself with bids. Familiarize yourself with the process. Take advantage. Again, I'm speaking about the county. You have to create your own mechanism or model for how you want to do the same with the cities you're going to engage. Folks, we send a newsletter out every Wednesday night. We hope you get that. sorry. Every Wednesday, once a week. We hope you get that newsletter. It gives you hot tips. It gives you information. It tells you more about the office. And it always leads you to our events as well as our website. Next slide. So reminder, Q&A was at the bottom. If we got some questions, I'm certainly going to entertain them. That chat was not about questions. And, and, let, let, and let me give one of those purchasing rules. See, let's be real. We said chat was for shout outs. If you had a question, it needed to be in Q&A. People say, Mr. McDonald, why do you be sassy and saying that? No, because this just happened to one of my small businesses. Folks, when it comes to procurement, I'm just using it as an example. You have to complete your applications the way they ask. You have to complete it and send it in timely. You can't give them what they didn't ask for, and you certainly can't send something in without giving them what they required. So I do play that game. Every workshop, I say give a shout out in the chat. But if you got a question, put in Q&A. And unfortunately, from time to time, people do put a question in the chat. That's not the Q&A. 
And I use that because I come right back around and say, it's not me being sassy. It's me saying, I just had in two different occasions, small businesses lose multi-million dollar contracts for failure to do what was instructed. I don't want none of my small businesses losing multi-million dollar contracts, let alone any contract, because they did not do what the instruction said. In that regard, you need to understand, I am government. And we do stand hard by those rules. Purchasing isn't allowed to waive those rules. So might sound like a game, is serious when we're dabbling within the procurement. I need you to be following those instructions. And I always use something like this just to give a reminder. You are ever bidding, please follow the instructions to the T. Next slide. And Sabika has we have, I'm sorry, Sabika has me where we are. We are at QA. Uh, Sabika, you can tell me, I think we almost did good timing because we now have a good 30 minutes that we can put into Q&A, folks, and that's what we want to do. So here we go. Sounds good, Sandy. Uh, thank you, everyone. So for those who have already submitted their questions in the Q&A, we're going to go through those right now. I have also given all of our attendees the option to raise their hand. So if you would like to ask your question aloud. We're going to allow that as well. So it's just really trying to meet you where you are. If you would like to ask your question aloud, raise your hand. I'm going to unmute you, and you can go ahead and do that. In the meantime, we're going to go through our Q&A right now. So first question, Sandy, is from Colin. How or who can I reach out to regarding MAP projects that fall under the BMSD, the Broward Municipal Services District? So for BMSD, and for both those who don't know, the Broward Municipal Service District is also unincorporated Broward, and that belongs to Broward County as a government. So any BMSD projects will be a part of bids and Periscope. Any projects that you read on the website that has the address relevant to BMSD, those will be county agencies. If they're road improvement projects, as I'm thinking, that's going to be my people like uh, Rich Tornese and Tony Huey. So again, you would see that information starting with us in my hot tips on a Wednesday. You would see it if it's the actual bid in the county system of Periscope. But a good point. If you wanted to meet uh, a Rich or a Tony, you want to attend the October contracting the opportunities meeting, because they'll be there. And if they have projects for the BMSD area relevant to MAP, they'll be announcing it. But BMSD unincorporated would be Broward County. So based on the project, if it's transit, it'll be our transit. If it's highway and roads, it would be our highways and road division. Thanks, Andy. Okay, our next one, which can apply to a few businesses. How can I put my business on the map? So, you know what? Great question. In our entrepreneurship course, we ask this question. How can I put my business on the map? Now, first of all, we tell all businesses, you spend a lot of time starting a business. So we hope you don't ever forget that in starting a business, sustaining a business, growing a business, you also need to market, market and advertise your business. So first of all, the simple answer is, I hope you are marketing and advertising your business, which means you know your industry, you know everything you do, you know everyone who's in your industry, you know what they do better than you, you know, but know what you do better than them. But then now it's about the audience. How do I approach that audience? Many use social media today. Some still use flyers. Some still use mailers. Some take advantage of networking events. Some take advantage of the fact that based on my business and who I am, the county from time to time does these meet and greets, even if it's not directly related to me. Maybe I go to the meet and greet. There's a chance to meet 60 other businesses or more, and there's a chance to meet prime contractors. How do you put your business on the map? Going back to any entrepreneurial or startup business course, you have to market your business. 
How do you expound on your business on the map? Yes, you have to engage the process, win a contract, and then no more than me letting everybody know, you need to let everybody know. How do I put my business on the map? When I go to a meet and greet, nine out of 10 are gonna have business cards. I'm gonna show up with a capability statement. How do I put my business on the map? Whatever I'm saying verbally, someone can come behind me and they get to go to my website. Cause I realize I gotta be connected to a website these days. There's a lot of ways to put your business on the map. But the main one with a lot of tentacles is you have to market, promote, and brand your business and find different ways to do so. Okay, Sandy, I'm going to allow one of our attendees to ask their question. Uh, Adrian, you raised your hand. You can unmute yourself and go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, how are you? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Adrian. Great, great. Hey, my question to you was, if all the documents are submitted timely in a timely manner, how long will it take for the turnaround for the CB, for the uh, SBE and uh, the certifications? Gotcha. So yeah. for the certifications right now, and, and I get to say this openly and honestly, we used to crank 30 days or less. We've been doing a good job and we are going to pat ourselves on the back that you guys are cranking out more online applications. That's something else we started new last year, online applications. So we've been hovering around 45 days or less. So I'm going to say, if you send all your documents in, and that's what I advise folks. So thanks for that question, Adrian. It helps me out. When submitting an application, this is what I recommend. Read my application online. Outline and identify all of the backup documents that's going to be necessary to support what you just read online. If you don't mind, take the little 15, 16 minutes and watch the video that shows you how to fill out every single line. I'm saying all that? that. So when you're ready, complete it, send it in, and give my shop about 45 days. And I'm saying it openly. If you get to that 40th day and you sent everything in and you know you did and you haven't heard from us, please reach out to us. We're not perfect, but at the end of the day, we don't want things falling through the gap either. What is there, where's the link for that? Um, and Broward.org slash econdev, that's our website. You can go there and you can see certification, local and federal program. I'm sure one of the staff will stick that uh, yes. in the chat pretty soon. Both of Thank those you. are in the chat, and I'm going to put it again for you, Adrian. Thank you very much. Thank no you, problem. Sir. Uh, Tina or Tina Williams, you can unmute yourself and ask your question as well. Good afternoon to attendees and good afternoon to Mr. McDonald. Uh, I do not have a question. What I want to do is reiterate what Mr. McDonald has said. I was one of the ones that took his advice and did everything that Mr. McDonald asked me to do. I have recently been certified in the office of Broward County. I have communicated with Mr. McDonald at several different networking events. I have successfully scheduled a meeting and gotten on Mr. McDonald's calendar. I follow processes and procedures and this office walks the walk and talks the talk. They do what they say that they're going to do. It is up to us to follow through and follow up because faith without works is dead. He has laid the format. He's giving you opportunities and they're there for you to take advantage of. Nothing is free. It will work if you work it. And so I said all of that to say this. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Thank you to your office and the wonderful staff that you have. I look forward to a long working successful relationship with your office and scaling my business to the next level. And because of you, I turned a business that we've had for eight years into a woman-owned business. And I'm excited about that. So I look forward for the good things to come. 
So everybody listen, do what is asked of you and you can be successful, but you have to do the work because respect is given where there are receipts. And this office has receipts and I give them much respect. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. We really appreciate that. And best to you in continuing to do what you've already started doing. Appreciate that. Savika? Thank you. Our next question is going to be from Ronald. Um, I believe it's a two-part. One is, I just received my MBE, CBE, and SBE certification. However, we are still broke. Where can I recruit people to help with the process? You might have to say, yeah, you're going to have to say that again. You said he received his MBE, SBE, and CBE. So he only, he only got two of them from me, SBE and CBE. But then he said he is still what now? He's, we are still broke. So Ronald, if you want to clarify to us um, in regards to, you say, I want to recruit people to help with the process, specifically which part of the process. Um, you're welcome as well to raise your hand, unmute yourself or add some additional information in there. I'm going to go to uh, Juan. Oh, and this is Mauricio from Smart Network Solutions. Can we register with Broward even though we're based in Mi Miami-Dade County? So the Broward program is no different than Miami, no different than my counterparts to the north. We all have our own individual small business programs. Now, we're different than Miami. You don't have to be headquartered with me. But to be a certified small business, you must set up a location in Broward. Again, Broward does bids with anyone to take advantage of most of what we talked about today. You have to be certified. And to be certified, you have to be a local business in Broward. So if you're in Miami and you're doing business, yes, you can participate in any procurement. But to get certified, you must have a location at least one year and meet those other criteria right here in Broward. Awesome. And I think that answers a few of our New York folks had that question. Um, they were DBEs from UCP. Um, in regards to these upcoming opportunities, what do they need to do? How can they participate? On the DBE side, when it comes to MAP, when it comes to surtax, if our user agency, transit, airport, highway, high, I mean, uh, uh, um, or, 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 or the, um, I said them, transit, port, or aviation, if they're going to use federal funds, I can't put my local CBE go. If they're using federal funds, then I do DBE goals. Other than that, you want to follow me and our program on the projects at transit as well as aviation where we apply DBE goals. But for MAP, if we end up going after a project and the user agency is going to use federal DOT money, that project may not have a CBE goal. It may have the federal DBE. And for those of you who don't know, disadvantaged business enterprise. It's under the federal program. So that's where the DBE kicks in. If any of my projects use that federal DOT, you would see in that solicitation DBE, not my CBE. Okay, and we have Ronald. You can add yeah. me yourself. Go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. Oh, okay, good afternoon and thank you so much for everything that you do. And I concur with the lady that was speaking before me telling you guys, you need to do this, you need to do that whenever they ask. But the question I am ask, I was asking because I just recently get certif all the certification. And when I said broke, unfortunately I have no money. And uh, it seemed like even like the people don't want to loan us money because our sale is not strong enough. Gotcha. And this is what I'm saying. And I just want to know if I want to recruit people to help with the, the process, where do I start? Okay, so, so here we go. We're going to go back to an entrepreneurial class. And Ronald, thanks for that question because sometimes people are quiet when they really need to be screaming. Folks, this is business. And Ronald just gave me the best example to say, what I apologize for not saying earlier, but I normally do this at the beginning. You have made individual decisions to either leave your job, never start a job, but at the end of the day, start a business. I'm one who applauds you and say, hey, get into this world. 
But get into this world means you must take everything under consideration when it's about starting a business. And Ronald just said it. Access to capital, resources is definitely one of the things. So you're great in getting all your certifications. But even your certifications are for not. If you're lucky enough to go after a bid and win a contract, you answer all the questions right, and they say, hey, you won that contract. And the contract says net 30, which means you don't get paid for 30 days. Do you have the money to pay your insurance, pay your bonding, pay your staff, get the equipment, get the material? So before people get to this step, I remind them you've chosen to be in business. There's another part of my office. I know we're talking small business, but our name is Office of Economic and Small Business Development. You need to be on my economic development side. You need to be honest and candid and tell us your story. First and foremost, PPP, EIDL, COVID, those type of federal funds, that grant, that's over. We're now just talking to businesses the way we did from 1972 up until COVID. We're starting again. If you are a startup business and you want to start talking about access to resources, you want to start talking about access to capital, you want to know how to start a business, that's an economic development conversation. You need to understand where does your resources come from? Anyone who started a business, and many of you started it, you also had that question. After deciding what you wanted to go into, you had to decide, was this money coming from savings? Did my grandmama die and leave me a whole lot of money? Did I win the lottery? Do I have investors? Do I got seed investors? Did I team up with a financial partner? Having access to capital is no joke. So if you want to know to Ronald's question, that now that he's got these certifications and he's telling me he has a business, but from a process, he doesn't have funding, I do have to back Ronald up and I want Ronald to reach out to our office. I'm gonna have you speak with my ED manager or staff and we're really gonna take a look at where you are. Cause you're right, as a business, it's for not if you don't have access to capital. You have to have resources to do what it is you said you can do and no certifications. So we would put into the chat the contact information for Wharton Berger. He's my ED manager. I'll make sure staff puts his email and his phone number, and you want to email him and say, I was on the workshop today. I have my small business certifications. I need to take a step or two back and address resources. I'm in need of access to capital. Again, we're being open. I don't have grants for you, but I can tell you every organization in the area who's doing lending. I can share what we tell folks, affordable lending. And based on the business from time to time, I can tell you where there's potentially investors who sometimes like to support small business. But we can have that conversation with you or anyone, but that's the economic development side of the office. If I'm a business, in order to do my business, I need to have resources. Thanks, Ronald. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for your attention. Thanks, Ronald. And All right, have... <clears throat> All right we're going to go to our next question. Um, one of them is, where can I find a list of all certified firms in Broward County, SBEs? Oh, beautiful. And thanks for these easy home run questions. So, again, on our website, Broward.org, slash econdale when you go to our website and you talk you see certification you see local businesses you're going to see another word it says directory click that directory you will be able to play around in that directory and see all of my certified sbes you can see all of my certified cbes and on the federal side you can see all my certified dbes and acdbes in short, there is a directory on my website where you can find all the businesses who are currently certified with us. And Anthony, I've already responded um, to your question as well to provide you the link. So all of our attendees, you can definitely click on that link to go directly to our certified firm directory. Um, we do have a hand raised from Cynthia. Uh, you can go ahead and ask your question as well. After she unmutes. 
Sandy's right. I did need to unmute. Uh, my name is Cynthia Alexander. I'm the owner of Center Notary. And actually, I would like to actually tell everyone that the CBE, DBE, ACDBE, and all the BEs do work. And because when I started off, I started off as just a notary. And I had someone actually say that to me uh, as well. I'm a notary processor and a few other things. But the thing that actually have gotten me contracts, sometimes you have to pivot. And my very first contract I won as a CBE was for fingerprinting, which has absolutely nothing to do with um, notary. Now I'm an insurance broker and I am actually on with a, with a large insurance company on Miami-Dade County School Board and Broward County School Board. Okay, so what I'm saying is, you know, you're going to you're gonna work and everything's going to go fine. Of course, you're going to have bumps in the road, but every once in a while, you've got to pivot. And Sandy, I actually call him all the time, Savika and everyone. There's, there's a great team to work with. Now, my little company is made over half a million dollars this year. So I'm just saying, if you stick to it and pivot every now and then, like the thing that he was just talking about for the MOT, I'm going to get that certification now because I see the money in it. And that's what you've got to do. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you all. Have a great day. Thank you, Cynthia. And thanks again for actually helping us realize what the real opportunities are. So, guys, let me tell you that piece about what Cynthia said. Remember, I'm government. Sabika's government. All our staff is government. Folks, we're not getting ready to advise you to do nothing. Because you know the truth. You act like you like me. But if we advise you and you do it, and three years later you ain't won no contract, you want to sue the county. So we're not advisors. We don't advise. But we do share information. We disseminate information. We will listen and give you our thoughts on what you're sharing. But we don't advise. Cynthia actually was one of those that when we met her as a notary and we understood the program, similar to Ronald, economic development side of my office, small business side of my office. Cynthia had the right theme because she realized Broward County. So a whole bunch of notaries up in Broward County. I'm a notary. I can help them without them mailing their stuff to Tallahassee. The only disconnect, she's right. There's tons. I got three in my office. But if the county doesn't buy it, then it's not like I can set a goal. All the notaries throughout the county were independent. So what that meant for her is that maybe I can still find a way to engage these people. That's the ED side. But let me learn more about the program to see what it is the county is buying that I'm qualified to do. Asterisk, qualified to do. Everything that Cynthia is doing, she's qualified to do. So you heard what she also said. I don't want people to think, just start writing stuff down. Because if you're not qualified, because remember, I certify, I don't qualify. Agencies qualify. You got to be able to do what you say. So think about it. She's talking about MOT now. But she also heard me. Just simply check with the state to see what the state requires to get certified in MOT. If she does that, she's probably going to come back to me four or five months from now, say, hey, Sandy, add MOT, NACE code to my certification. And we will, because she'll be able to show she's qualified. I'm saying that because she mentioned a quality term, pivot. I didn't say it intentionally when I gave you that long example about even if it took you two years from now to decide to get started and you got 24 more years to go, the person I'm examining is someone who says, if this is what they're really buying, if this is what's really been reviewed, if this is what's really been approved, they're not promising me I'm going to win. But when I think about how many firms he has, when I think about how many cities are participating, and when I think about the county's volume, even if he already got 10 firms in that area, there's room for me. It's all competitive. So when you look at it that way, yes, for some of you, pivot's going to be a consideration. For some of you who've never started at all, you're going to be thinking about, well, then what is it that they're going to be buying the most of for the next 10 years? And what is it based on what they're going to buy the most of for the next 10 years? I have interest or capacity or capabilities of starting. Because at the end of the day, whatever I start, I'm just officially saying, 
I got enough capacity to be engaged competitively. So think about that. Savika. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go, I responded to Katin, uh, who wanted to know, she filled out uh, the SBE, CBE application, everything went well, and she never received a certificate. So I'm going to let her call our office for that one. By all means, please do. Thanks for filling it out, but uh, we'll definitely make sure one of our people get back with you. Thank you. Okay. Nari would like to know, where can we find a list of CBEs that received money? That received money? Okay, so you can look at those slides that to me, that Savika put up because we're doing the same. We're checking with user agencies. We're checking with purchasing. We're checking with our firms ourselves because we want to say it. So if nothing else, from my convention center, I got the list of the 49 to 52 firms that's been paid to date to all the ones Savika had. We will post those back on our website. And again, no fibs. And again, we post what we know, not what we think. So we don't mind sharing that. As a small business, I need to be open with you. Some of y'all getting ready to get in the program. Some of y'all starting to win more contracts. I'm already showing you. We share your information. So if you're hiding from Uncle Sam and IRS, I apologize. We share your information relevant to you. You want to contract what industry, that dollar amount. We do. For the same reason the person's asking this question. People believe what they see. They want to know not what Sandy is saying, not what Sabika is saying, not that Sandy and Sabika is lying, but it's better when on behalf of the county, I can give you a list of small businesses who actually want contracts. And I'm going to take you one step further. We've asked that question. Challenge us. Take the list. Take the, norm, the name of the firm. And based on the name of the firm, go to my directory see how long they've been certified. See if the only people winning who's been around 10 or 15 years or see if some of the people winning have only been certified four or five. You're going to be shocked because you're going to see some of the people winning, they only been certified two or three. So continue to challenge us. Look at those slides. Get those names. We've already told you how to go to the small business directory. Match that name to the company. You'll see the owner. You'll see the address, you'll see the phone number, you will see when they got certified. And then you'll begin to see that folks who are dotting the I's, crossing the T's, and engaging a process are actually winning. So that's important. Okay, next question. I applied to be a CBE a few years ago, and this individual is saying that the application was actually withdrawn because they had a lack of warehouse and inventory. So does that policy still remain? So A, as long as you're not a broker, the policy is not as intense as it was four years ago. And for the greater audience, I won't bore you. When we have commodities, see the county allows primes to be brokers. But because we support small business, you can't say, Sandy, I can get you everything from a lawnmower to a pencil to a television. I can lay asphalt and I can also give you uh, glass. See, that's a broker. That's not building small business. That's not growing my economy. That's not creating jobs. So we don't allow small businesses to broker. And then when we didn't allow them to broker, it was commodities. The person might say, hey, I'm a furniture wholesaler. Back then, then you needed to have brick and mortar with some furniture, with some samples, with some examples. You couldn't have been in your house with a furniture book. That's more like on the brokering. So back in that era, we were requiring vendors to have some degree of what it is they say they sell in a real store. And actually back then, we were asking you to have a whole bunch of what you needed so we can prove that you are who you say you are. So to answer that person's specific question, we're not as restrictive as we used to be. But you're still not going to be able to tell me that you do A, B, C, D, and E. And when we come to your office, there is absolutely no vision of any kind of A, B, C, D, and E. We do understand on-time delivery. So we're staying away from the broker. We understand commercial commodities. So there's going to be some as a part of the certification review, that you're going to have to demonstrate you are who you are and not just a group of catalogs. Just putting it as a bigger example. But yes, 
is not as restrictive or heavily required as it used to be. The best thing I will say to you four years later, you need to re-engage us in the process. Before you even take the time to go through the paperwork, you probably know who I'm talking about. You should contact Cheryl or Don directly. Tell us what your current status is and let us let you let us tell you some of the changes we've made over the last four years. Thanks, Sandy. And I think we had a couple of questions about Friday's meet and greet regarding the Terminal Connector Project. Um, for our attendees, I have put a link to our events page. So you can go to our OESBD events page website. It is for August 26th, this Friday, you can register. And they wanted to know in regards to the goals, is it a 25% goal for CBE or SBE? CBE. Terminal 1, 2, and 3, FLL, our airport, that connector project has a 25% CBE goal. Currently, it's a, a estimated $125 million project. That means about $31 million is going to be CBE required. And another question regarding the meet and greet is, we specialize in helping business owners, entrepreneurs select the best option for accident, disability, health, long-term care, and life insurance. The focus seems to be more on construction. Would this benefit us? So I think you answered your own question. We're getting ready to have a room full of businesses across the board. That's not a question for Broward County. That's a question for you knowing your audience. That means for you, wait a minute. Oh, Sandy got a meet and greet. All of these businesses, along with the primes, are going to be in a room talking about that county project. Remember what I said earlier? When I do these face-to-face, -face, I used to say, look to the front, look to the back, look to the right, look to the left. See, that's you. You want to be in the room and for no other reason during networking. You want to make sure all of those businesses in that room who's trying to meet those four contractors, you want to make sure as many of them get to know you as possible. Because if they're real businesses, according to you, they're going to need some of your services. So that's why you might say, yep. I might attend that meet and greet and other meet and greets, not because the county's buying what I'm selling, but if the county's getting ready to put 60 to 70 to 100 small businesses in a room, I need to be there to network. That's what I would say to you in that regard. And I think this last question might wrap us up for the day. A lot of our attendees would like to know how can I get on Sandy or my calendar. Um, how can we meet with your office? Who can help us navigate that CBE application process? And again, how do I just get help in learning more? So across the board, across the board, you want to meet with Savika? Email her, call her. If she can fit it in her calendar, she will. You want to meet with me? Email or call. Claire makes sure that I meet with everybody who wants to meet. Whether it's 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45, you really go have to have something to talk to me about an hour with, but 15, 30, 45, we're good to go. Guys, take advantage of our website. A lot of the things you want to meet about, and that's why we do it, because you're busy. A lot of things you want to meet about, we ought to put that information out there. It's just like when people talk about help me with the certification application. Okay, you need to know. From time to time, we do a workshop, how to complete your certification application. So you don't need me. You want to find that date and you want us to walk you through. Okay, how to complete your certification application. You don't need me. You heard me say it earlier. The application's online, but oh my goodness, they also did a video. Yep, and I'm being respectful. That video is written sixth grade English. We're serious when the voice says, write your first name. Write your last name. Write your address. If different, write your business address. Folks, we walk you through it intentionally. So if you can watch the video and you can read the application, you can do the application. But even with that being said, if you can watch the video and do the application, you can still go to my events calendar and see where there's a meeting to complete your local certification application. But if you want to meet, we'll meet. If you want to call, we'll entertain the call. 
but so much of what we're doing and saying not to hold you up is actually on the website. But we will take those meetings. Again, Claire scheduled all my meetings and I'm more than happy to meet with anyone who wants to meet with me and the same for all of my staff in this office. So guys, mm -hmm. with that, we want to thank you. I want to thank Savika and her team and everyone for joining us today. Thank you for taking the time out to listen to us today. And if you had to carry something home, at the end of the day, we will continue to make sure that information is made available. We will continue. Folks, you really have to connect the dot, dot the I and cross the T and get engaged. What I'm really excited about, could have been nervous about it in 2019. Heck, I could have been nervous about it in 2013 when I came here. I've been doing these programs now for over 28 years, Michigan as well as in D.C., but I'm here now. And I was nervous about, is there a disconnect? Do folks really not get it? Folks understand, since 2014 and I got here in 2013, I'm not nervous. Small businesses in Broward get it. Why? Because I've got small businesses winning. I'll give you a number I haven't even posted yet. I got here in 2013. Active contracts that are still open. Active contracts that are still open. Not the ones that's closed and gone. Open. From 13 to now, there's over $800 million of activity finding its way to certified small businesses. That's a real number I'm going to report on later in October. But as an audience, you heard it first, and Sabika done got me in trouble because she said she recorded this. So it's out there now. But from 2013 to now, I get to proudly say, how much I went to the small business community, Sandy, through that certified program of y'all's? I get to say over 800 million. And people are gonna say, wow, that's a lot. I'm like, it's decent. But if you're really paying attention, folks, I got room for more. Remember now. Even with COVID, the last five years of my nine, we do about a billion dollars a year in procurement. And if my program since 2018 has been at least 25%, do your own math. Quarter of a million each year. Four years should have been a billion. See, I'm screaming 800 million since 13. Five years should have been a billion. One, two, five. So are you following me? I'm excited about 800 million, but I got room to do more. We want to make sure you're a part of that. So thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Savika, for putting together this wonderful workshop and this presentation. Again, she's mentioned, she'll probably have this up on our website for you guys to have by early next week. But again, check out the events calendar. If you get the newsletter, check that out tonight. And we look forward to seeing you at our next event or our workshop. Thanks again.